And this sutta is particularly interesting and important in understanding something about the history of the development of the Buddhist text because we can see in this sutta how certain elements of the evolving or the emerging Abhidharma found their way into the sutta Pitaka. And then there have been comparative studies done between the Pali version of the sutta, the version preserved in the Chinese Madhyama Agama, and then some Tibetan counterparts or versions of the sutta preserved in the Tibetan language. And from this, by comparison, we could see which version represents an earlier stage, which version represents a somewhat later stage. And interestingly, though, the Pali tradition says that the Pali suttas are the oldest, most authoritative sources. But we could see, actually, that that's not completely the case that the Chinese version of the sutta seems to be older, sort of more archaic than the Pali version, which is showing, as I said, the influence of Abhidharma modes of thought. And a very important and illuminating comparative study of this sutta with its parallels has been done by a monk who used to be my student, but now is sort of miles ahead of me. This is Bhikkhu, miles ahead of me as far as scholarship goes. This is Bhikkhu Analayo. He has a book called Madhyama Agama Studies. These are studies based on the, primarily on the Chinese Madhyama Agama, but comparing the Chinese Madhyama Agama versions of a number of suttas with the Pali versions, versions preserved in some cases Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit, some versions preserved in the Tibetan language. And so this shows how different early, this different schools of early Buddhism have preserved what is essentially, originally the same text. But as the schools separated, the text underwent variations. Some have been, <coughs> let's say, have preserved earlier versions and some versions show the influence of the later evolving or emerging modes of thought. <clears throat>